Okay, good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Adams Brothers podcast. We have special guest here this evening, Miss Terry Renard. She is the director of Parks and Recreation with the city of Deerfield Beach, and uh, we'd like to welcome her to the show. Welcome. welcome, Terry. Thank you, and thank you all for having me on. You're absolutely welcome. You're absolutely welcome. There might be a slight delay out there if you're watching on Facebook. So if you see us delay a little bit, there's a slight delay through Facebook. So again, we want to welcome Terry here to the Adam Feathers Podcast Show. And uh, go ahead and lower the music. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, as I said, we have Miss Terry Renard, and she is the Director of Parks and Recreation, City of Deerfield Beach. And she's here to answer some of our questions and hopefully uh, uh, get some uh, answers to uh, some upcoming events and uh, whatever uh, uh, Ms. Renard would like to share with us. So uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So as we know that there's some... Uh, Capital projects that's going on. Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, I, I, I forgot to even introduce you. Go ahead, uh, Terry, tell and us tell us a stuff. little bit about you and um, how long you've been with the city of Deerfield Beach and um, your journey here to Deerfield. your journey here to Deerfield Beach, please. Sure, sure. So Terry Reinard, um, been a Parks and Rec kid all my life. I uh, grew up um, participating in after school programs and pop up programs in a park that I walked through on the way to school. I uh, started working for Parks and Rec on the maintenance side in 1981, so it was a bit ago, and worked as a summer worker, uh, whipping weeds is what we called it, but that was before weed eaters. So um, worked my way up through the system uh, in Kansas City Parks and Rec, that's my hometown. I uh, had an opportunity to get some promotions. I worked a little bit in Ann Arbor, a little bit in Fort Lauderdale, and then had a chance to become the first female director in Kansas City um, in their 130-year history. Um, went back, did that for a few years, and retired, and wasn't quite done being uh, being in fall parks and recreation. So it's all this job posting. It's really a lot of the things that I like to do. Um, it, you know, it, it asked for collaboration, working with the community. Um, team building, the stuff, the stuff that really attracts me um, to the profession. So I threw my name in and, and here I am. So I've been here just almost two years. It'll be two years here in a couple of weeks. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, that's a, I want to thank you for applying for the city of Deerfield Beach because uh, we needed a good, nice, strong, uh, Parks and Recreation Director here, and uh, we certainly have that, and uh, we think you're doing a, an outstanding job, and, uh, you know, just keep up the good work, and I'm sure you'll be fine here with the city <laughs> here Field Beach, so. All right, so thank you for that introduction, and uh, as I said before, I know we have some capital projects that's going on here in the city of Deerfield Beach, one being the Tigna Center, and uh, I believe the Center for Active Aging and uh, Braithway Center for Active Aging. Yep. I think that's another one of the capital projects. But I really want to talk about uh, the Tigner Center. So uh, if you could give us the update on what's going on with the Tigner Center and uh, how it's coming along, please. Um, sure, absolutely. Um, so if, if anyone's been by there, and I'm sure just about everybody has, the, uh, the Tigner Center is no more. Um, the new construction has started. Um, we're being told that's on about an 18 to 20 month timetable. Um, so if you think about the size of the old center, is about 16, or I'm sorry, 6,000 square feet. The new center is 22,000 square feet. So almost four times as big. It'll be a two-story building. Um, of course, there was a lot of conversation about making sure we had enough banquet space so we could host our own, you know, reunions, events, 
graduate, whatever those those larger celebrations are, we could hold them here in our city. The commission supported that, and I, I'm, you know, from the from the end user perspective, I'm really happy that they made that decision. Um, so there'll be big banquet space, but there's a lot of uh, programmable space and um, flex space. And by flex space, I mean uh, several of the rooms have movable walls. So um, instead of it being one classroom, you can push the wall back and make two classrooms. And the area that is on the second story above the reception or the uh, banquet hall is the same footprint, but it's divided into three sections. It can be, you can open it up and have one big room. You could have two rooms, th the third section, whatever. So it's got a lot of flexibility and a lot of opportunity to program. Um, the approach on programming is gonna be something that we are very proud of and that we think works well, um, is this concept of uh, community engagement cafe. And the idea is, yeah, I've been in Parks and Rec 40 years and yeah, I know a lot about Parks and Rec, but I don't know exactly what this programming needs to be for this community. And um, so those, those, and you guys, I think I've seen both of you at, um, at a community engagement cafe. Uh, we've ha been having them for about a year. So we're gonna start focusing those on the programming for Tigner. And, and the way that works is we serve a meal, we invite the, anyone from the community that wants to come in and we really start talking about, you know, we're gonna focus on what are our fitness opportunities? What are adult education opportunities? What are our youth enhancement opportunities? Um, and then it has a very nice dance studio. So how do we use that? Not just for dance, but for um, exercise and for opportunity maybe to offer some classes, adult fitness that we haven't had the space previously, but we want the community to really give us that input. And, um, and we, you know, a big, beautiful building is great, but that's not what makes a community center. The community makes the community center and, and getting the community involved in what we're gonna have there so that when we open those doors, you know, we max out the use every day. So, and that and that's great. That's great. That's good to hear. A big, huge building like that is uh, it has ample space to um, uh, have it filled up with just programs and all kind of things that uh, I'm sure the kids need um, to keep them out of trouble. You know, of, of course, you know some. Some some unfortunate incident happened out at the the Ovita McKeithen football field up up front there, and uh, a lot of people in the community were, you know, saying talking about programs, and uh, uh, we need to try and get more programs in our centers to keep these kids uh, occupied and to keep them off the streets, and uh, you know, and just to keep them occupied. So that's going to be really huge uh, to have some input from the community as to um, what they would like to see um, the city uh, implement into um, the new Tigna Center. Yeah, and I, I'm glad you mentioned that specifically the youth element and, and of course the tragedy we had in December out, out at Ovita. Um, so we had started last summer a program we call TAS, which is teen, it stands for Teen Adventures All Summer. And these are free activities for middle school and high school kids. It involves field trips. Um, they go, you know, to boomers, they go to, you know, the aquarium, um, but they also have consistent activities every week. There's a book club, there's an opportunity for um, archery was really popular last summer. We didn't see that coming. Of course, basketball, soccer, the regulars, um, and then some STEM activities in terms of robotics and those sorts of things. So the idea is, and, and, and we all know it, but the more opportunities we give kids to do something creative and fun, not so structured that it feels too much like school, um, the less opportunity um, they will have to 
to, to get into some activities that we all know could lead them to trouble. So this is our second summer uh, of TAS, and it actually, we have our kickoff um, in the gymnasium there, the Rob Gym at Oviedo McKeithen this uh, Saturday night that's open to families and, and kids alike uh, to try and get them kicked off. The, the cool thing about the program is um, based on how many activities you participate and, and attend, you, you earn points and those points at the end of the summer are cashed in for gift cards. So we had some kids that got two or $300 worth of gift cards to go back to school with. And the idea is just keep incentivizing them to stay good, involved in positive activities. So that um, program is on our website. I would highly, highly, highly encourage anyone that has a question to contact us, check it out, get your kids involved. Like I say, it's free. Um, but more importantly, um, it, it, I think it fills a critical gap um, for our youth in the summer. Yes, and uh, Terry, this is Wayne Adams. Uh, Terry, what are some of the programs that the city have in mind uh, for putting out there uh, to the place? I know I talked to a few people, and I don't know if this fits the agenda of what the city... I know back in the days, they used to offer, like, at, say at Deerfield Beach High School, they used to offer uh, air conditioned programs, uh, welding programs, stuff of that nature. I'm not saying welding or something can go in there, but we had programs here at our high school that, uh, you know, people was able to go like eight air condition, uh, 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 sewing, uh, pottery. Uh, what type of programs... Uh, do the city have in mind uh, right now that they would like to see uh, there at the new Tigna Center when it comes? Yeah, um, excellent question. So we've, we've kind of toyed with the idea and, and actually tried to work on um, a program. We know there is a gap in, in, um, in the service industry, particularly, I mean, even we can't find bus drivers, right? We can't find enough maintenance workers um, you know, all of the, all of the trades will tell you their apprenticeship programs are down. Um, so we tried to start a program over at, um, Highlands Community Center and, um, didn't, didn't get it too far off the ground. And a lot of it had to do with space because kind of need space to store some of your materials. Uh, we need a good, uh, partner. Um, to work on that with us. So the idea is to try and get all that together by the time we, um, we open the Tigner Center. That will be kind of that um, job learning opportunity, not just for kids that are still in school, but also for young adults. Um, you know, not everybody wants to go to college and I would encourage everyone to go to college, but that's, that's not everybody's thing. You can make a good living. Um, and, and, and do really well, particularly in the trades, um, even culinary school and some of those things. So I think this will give us an opportunity to do um, some learning in an environment that's community focused, but also can lead them to career opportunities. Yes, and, and that was more or less my thinking that with that, New Tigna Center, that can bring so many opportunities that we never had before. And that's why me and my own brother, more or less my own brother, definitely fought to get the higher seating. Uh, so, I mean, we're not oh, patting ourselves on the back, but I, you know, yes. my brother fought hard to get that right. there. And that's what the focus was. We wanted to see more educational programs go out to you know, to the Tigna Center. And that was the point mm -hmm. because we want to see more educational. I know we have a lot of athletics, uh, which is good, but I definitely wanted to see the community, not just the young, uh, the youngsters. I wanted to something that a lot of people, my generation and older and some younger than my generation that can go out there and enjoy arts and crafts or, or something else. So I'm, I'm proud that hopefully something can, can, we can bring something there in the future to give, give hope. Right. Awesome. Yeah. And yeah, and that's good. And it's good to see that uh, that the city supported the more seating, because I mean, why, why would you not want to go up with head up with the uh, 
with the Hilton over there and the Pat Larkin Center. So we could bring a lot of that business right back here to Deerfield. And I'm, 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 I'm hats off to the city of Deerfield commission, right. the mayor, the commissioners, uh, they listen to the community and the input from the community and uh, kudos to the entire commission, the city manager. Um, want to thank them for yes. bringing that seating out there because it was much needed. Uh, it was much needed. And they put over another million dollars, I believe. So people might yes. not think that's substantial, but that, it that, is. that was very, very that was a game breaker here. Yes, Cause I, I'm yeah. being honest. I've been here all my life and I don't remember. And I asked a few people in the audience that I didn't, I never remember that much of an investment being put over in district two, I, I just, if it, it might've happened, but I just, I, I didn't know it happened if it did. And I think like Daryl said, I think the, the mayor and the commissioners for having the courage to go out under a lot of criticism and, and the city manager and, right. and invest that million dollars right. in there, in the right. Tegna Center. And, 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 and also music lessons. Uh, a lot of the churches in here in this community, mm -hmm. There, there's a shortage of musicians, piano players, uh, bass players, uh, drummers, uh, guitar players, uh, sax players, whatever, you know, the instruments that these churches use. There is a shortage of, of, of especially piano players. Like, take my church, for instance, uh, you know, we, we can never have enough piano players, you know, um, so... Hopefully we could get some uh, some music lessons in there, you know, some piano lessons in there and maybe some guitar lessons. And, you know, it's, you know, that would be a, a huge, huge uh, asset to this city and community. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate that. And, you know, as we're working our, our way through the next eight to 10 months on, um, on developing the, per I, I wrote that down. So um, make sure that doesn't, fall off the plate, but but those are the ideas and the partnerships too, because um, sometimes we have difficulty finding instructors, right? And I don't think it's a matter of there aren't piano teachers out there. I think we just haven't developed the right partnerships that let us know where that talent is and and um, how we can, how we can, you know, we have a couple different ways we can do instructor agreements. Um, that are fair to the instructor that also uh, help us out. But yeah, you know, partnerships are, are critical. Um, we've got some good partnerships are, are ready with some of our local um, organizations, but but we need to we need to push really hard to find, you know, who's that best option for us to to find a piano instructor right and who are going to be our dance instructors and and all of those opportunities are on the table so uh, I, I would just encourage your listeners as we're bringing program ideas to also do not be afraid to say you know you ought to try and hire this guy he's the best dance instructor I've ever seen and and that information is is really helpful to us so well, we would definitely help you with that. absolutely yeah, yeah we'll we, be, know, we know some people that right that does the uh music right. and and happy to work with you yes, on that yeah definitely yeah, yeah. And yeah. we'll, we'll yeah. definitely get together and um uh just moving on from that a little bit my 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 next thing that I would like to uh just ask about I noticed that the um uh, baseball field is being uh removed or demolished from uh the back of the Ovita McKeithen complex. So, yep. Yeah, um, is is there yeah. is it going to be replaced or is it just going to be uh removed altogether? So, uh if you are so the baseball fields um we call that I mean there's three baseball fields there. That's our multi-purpose space. Um when I first got here, one of um so let me talk a little bit about parks. Parks are like the place, they're the civic commons, right? It's the place that we all should be able to go and play together and play against each other in a sport. And at the end of the game, hug each other, have a meal, whatever. Um, it, it, it's the space that isn't territorialized. Um, so one of the things that I really wanted to bring um, was a destination playground um, to the city. So we have a couple of issues with where the playground is currently at Ovita. Um, there's not great sight lines. A part of it is because there's often cars parked in front of it. 
part of it is because the way it was designed as kind of a linear, you can't see the back pavilion. When you design a playground, you want to be able to see from all different directions, right? Whether it's an animal or a person or, or a kid that's run off, you want to be able to have really good sight lines. Um, so we are building the destination playground in the, in the corner of that open space. It will, um, it will not interfere with two of the fields. It will interfere with the backfield in terms of distance um, for home run fence idea. The other two um, items that we're hoping, well, one we are doing is uh, kind of an adult um, swing, like a front porch swing. Think of it like that. Only there's three of them. So the idea is you walk the trail, we have a walking club over there now. You sit down afterwards, you have a cup of coffee, you talk, you know, build community, build community. That's what we keep doing. We do not have a big um, outdoor pavilion. Um, the largest one we have is at Johnny McKeithen. And as everyone knows, the parking is, is mediocre there. Um, so having a, a pavilion, you know, the indoor space is gonna be great, but you know, sometimes you just want to have a family barbecue or an outdoor uh, gathering, and we don't have a good space for that right now. So uh, where that infield is on the baseball field that we just talked about, the furthest one to the back, um, that will have a large pavilion um, specifically for families to have, again, family reunions, gathering, birthday parties, um, those kinds of things to give us um, more outdoor space for, for bringing the community together. Yes, because we have a long history here of having baseball in our community. And in the 90s, way before you got here, our baseball field was, I mean, growing up as a kid, Terry, I remember to baseball tournaments starting on a Thursday and you would have so many people out to that park that it was just so many. It was just a pleasure growing up, being able to go watch my dad. I mean, my dad, I watched yeah. my dad play baseball out there uh, growing up. Uh, and that was taken away in the 90s. And I, it was taken away, I think, by a lot of people that came here and did not know our history uh -huh. of sports here. And it's like, when that baseball field was taken away, we had softball. I mean, we had, we had it, we had the, we had it. Women's league, women's we had league, the little kids league, leagues, and t-ball, everything. Ball, we had it all. Yeah. And when they took that away, we lost a decade. Over a decade, we lost of of kids knowing what baseball or softball was. So that is the reason right now why. We just have so many kids just want to play football because they didn't know the tradition that we came up on under. Right. I want that tradition back because even when they put the baseball field there, Terry, I don't think it was pushed like it should have been uh, to get the to get the teams there to get what the, where we were back in the seventies, the eighties, and the nineties, and the fields just sat back there and languished back there. So. I think that's why when you when you got here two years ago, you see no use because I don't think, and maybe it was, I don't know, because I'm behind, I'm 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 somewhere else. I didn't see it pushed. I never saw baseball, little uh, youth baseball or adult baseball pushed out there when the fields were brought back there. So that is a problem. And and don't be fooled by nobody. Everybody here wants to see those days back here right. when that park was full of the adults playing baseball. It's it's like I say again, Terry, we lost a we lost over a decade of we could have who knows we could have had the next Henry Aaron or 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 you know we, we lost so many so much talent in those 10 years and right. I don't want to see that taken away or gone. Uh, I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, no, I am. Um, I, I, I have been filled in on the baseball history um, uh, by the community. Um, some of the original people, um, uh, actually your father and Mr. McVeigh came and talked to me a while back. 
And that's one of those programs we're going to need some help. We're going to need help recruiting coaches. We're going to need help um, recruiting kids. And, and my idea is, you know, you start with the youngest couple of age groups and then every year you add an age group, right? Because if you just go out there today and say, we want six different age groups, I don't know that you'll be able to get enough participation. But if you start with a couple of the younger age groups, the next year you add nine-year-olds, the next year you add under 12s, the next year, um, you got to keep growing that program. So the two right. fields that are left, that's the, the fullest intention is to do that. I, I am going to look to the community for help on that. Right. Um, right. We have a very successful little league program, but it's, it's this civic commons, the idea that this is our central park, right? Mm -hmm. This park is central to our community, it's centrally located, and it is, is the community. I mean, I look back at old photos of, of um, West Side, it was, called, it was called West Side, right? West Side Park, and, yes, yes. and it's full, full of families, full of kids, full of adults, and um, I am a firm believer in, and I will be until I die, the more good activity you bring into a park, the less trouble you have in a park. Absolutely. And when we talk about park security, you know, we can we can ask for BSO to do more patrol, we can put more lights in, but it's activating the space is the, is the best way to make that a safe space. Will that will it be a, a BSO substation in the new Tigna Center? There is, and there's a very nice BSO substation. So it'll actually be on the main floor as you come in. Right. Um, it will there'll be, it's kind of a dual, it's one entryway. On the left side, you'll be greeted from Parks and Recreation. On the right side, you'll be greeted from uh, BSO, the substation. And I think their idea there is, is to really do a lot of their community outreach, their community police, those activities that encourage um, good, positive, more, you know, some of the PAL programs we've talked about, and PAL may be our best bet at trying to start developing um, this baseball, but we got to, we're going to have to have, have a partner to help us with that. So, right. um, but yeah, there will be a, there will be a, a nice BSO station in there. And, 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 and also Terry, you had touched on just now about the park security. I remember back in December when uh, the tragedy with Ricky Simmons had happened and I remember members of the community and uh, the president and the vice president of the Packer Rattlers, basically, and Commissioner Ben Preston and other people in the community pleaded with the city to enhance the security at the park. And uh, the president, uh, Tyrone Fieldpart of the Packer Rattlers, just said the park has never been safe. And... I would like to see an assurance from the city uh, going forward with the new season that we can enhance the security at Westside Park because I don't want to see anything like that happen again. And I know the community, everyone was there at that meeting that day. And uh, I hope everyone learned something or got something from that that meeting, but I definitely want to see the security. And I, I heard what you said just now about BSO, but we need the security at that park enhanced while the, our kids and grandkids are out there uh, getting ready for the uh, season with the pack of Rattlers. Uh, yeah, I can tell you. So right after, um, right after the tragedy in December, not long after that, we went into our flag football season, and and of course, flag football is um, not as intense as as um, the tackle football, but it has. We have a a really good, um, probably 150 kids, and a lot of families out there, and we had BSO there every night for that program. Um, and and uh, we will do the same as we have um, football going on, but it's it's got to be more than um, more than just a BSO presence. It's really got to be. Um, I know this this you guys are probably tired of hearing this already. It's got to be a community partnership, right? Absolutely. And you know when I'm out there in the evening and and I'm talking to kids, I'm an 
I'm an old white lady and they talk to me. Um, so I know if all of us would take time to say, hey, how was your day? How was your day, Deidre? You know, how, how are things going? Those kids, those kids are looking for someone to care about them. And, yes. um, and I think, you know, it's a, it takes all of us. It's, it, it's not my job. It's not BSO. It's not your job, but it's, it's our job. It and, is. um, and I think we can, I think we can do better at that. Um, but, it, but to your point specifically, more police presence that is in our budget. We, we have to pay BSO for that um, detail. It is in our budget to do. That is our intention. Um, but, you know, I would encourage everybody, you see, you see someone in the park and they're there by themselves, you know, ask, hey, how's it going? You know, we can't be afraid to be friendly. And uh, sometimes, sometimes our fear gets in front of us, and and and, and that's not it's not that's not that's not, that's not helping us. You know what I mean? Right. What what about what about the park rangers, uh, Terry? Uh, could they be uh, more visible um, at at some of these events? Uh, maybe uh, maybe add a you know one or two part time uh, uh, park rangers. I don't know how many you have on staff right now, but is there any way that they could be a little bit more visible during these uh, these events uh, as well uh, as well as BSO? Uh, if, if BSO uh, is there, I mean, the more the, the more the better. But uh, I guess that's my question: Will will um, the Rangers be more visible? Um, so uh, when I was listing the positions that are really difficult for us to fill, I should have mentioned park rangers. So the park rangers are actually in the public safety department now, which is where BSO and the fire department are. And they don't um, report to the department. They, of course, spend all their time in parks. They're down to two rangers right now. Okay. They have the responsibility to open and close the parks. They have the responsibility um, to make sure shelter reservations are kind of checked in and checked out um, pavilions when on the weekends when there are rentals. Um, I would love to see us, um, and I've talked with a couple of our local groups to be um, kind of eyes on the park, but not in a not in an enforcement kind of way, but you know, why couldn't we have um, some of our partner organizations just popping up, right? Just showing up in the park and and right. and getting a pulse for what's going on and helping out. Um, to answer your question, uh, when they are fully staffed, I do anticipate you'll see a lot more of them. But right now there are two. So they're covering two people, covering seven days a week, uh, trying to run from 5 a.m. to eight or 9 p.m. and and there just isn't enough bodies to go around right yeah because in the past they had private security out there i remember years ago they used to have private security so i don't know if that's something that the city would want to invest in again uh that was just a thought i know i don't know how effective that was but i remember they did have them there years ago i do remember the private security company that was there okay I, I, that's something I haven't considered, you know, I, I'm still living in this Pollyanna world where if we can do all the right stuff, the wrong stuff will, will stay away. Um, so I like, I mean, I, I realize you have to have a BSO presence, but um, I don't also want parks to become so full of enforcement that people are discouraged from going there. So yeah, right. that's the balance we got to find. Right. Right, right. And, 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 and another thing, uh, Terry, I know for a long time, uh, this community had been asking for a track field. If I was to the uh, Deerfield High track meet here months ago, maybe a month and a half ago, that thing was packed. I can say this much. We've been wanting a track field at that park. If, if, if we could around that football field, if that's possible, I think you'll get a lot of a lot of people will come. Parents, a lot you'll of people get more parents walk, out there walk, right. walking and as kids. the kids are uh, participating that's in right. football or cheerleading or softball or t-ball, whatever. 
the parents can come out there and exercise, exercise. while their kids are, you know, um, out there, um, you know, doing Practicing. that thing. So yeah, it's and, been it's been talked about a lot in the community yeah. about a a a, a track, track that's field. you know somewhere around the football field. field. Yeah, yeah, and that's what and we've been talking about it. But every every time we talk about it, it somehow or another, I don't think the the follow up happens, and it's just end up just being talked. I know I talked to my dad. I talked to a lot of other people uh, that wants to see. I mean, uh, that track field, if possible, put around the football field, like traditionally at our high school, that's not far from us right now. And if that, if you can pull that off, that would be a, definitely a home run for, for that park, because I think it'll make it more active. Now, when my, my grandson run track and he used to have to go somewhere else to, to run track and. I think if we have that here, that can be another game changer that can keep the kids occupied and doing something when football season right. is over. Right. Yeah. We, um, I'll have to, that's actually, uh, and Rebecca did give me a heads up on that question. I just didn't get it all measured out today. Mm -hmm. I'll have to see, you know, the process would be first, does it, does it fit? Like mm -hmm. physically, can we squeeze it in there? Uh, the second and and you know we've got the we got the concession stand and we've got the retention area. I mean, but but let me at least look at that. I, I will guarantee I'll look at that. Then the next process would be that you know we we start looking for funding and um, you know making it a request every year and and you know typically on a big project like that it's it, it'll be multiple years. One would to be doing the planning. We'll have to have a new South Florida water permit. Those things are very, very important, but boy, are they a pain when you're trying to make park improvements. So right. um, so that would have to happen. You'd have to have a design and engineer and all that. And then, and, you know, the actual funding for the construction. So, um, it, you know, there's a lot of stuff in that park. I, I don't disagree that it would be a nice amenity. I just don't know if it um, if we can make it work in there. Yes, yes. You want to read that comment? Yes, there? and one of, one of our viewers just uh, commented. Erica Erica Yorker said a track field with exercise equipment for the parents who want to be active but don't have the time because of their kids' activities are keeping them busy. So, as I said before, I like to see it at least. If not there at the football field, somewhere if we can find some place in there, because we need a track field there. And I, I know, I think this community here, we get bogged down so much in just talking and no action ever get done. And and I mean, I know you're the person that can get that done. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> yeah. I got confidence in you uh, right. going forward. But I could tell you, just like the uh, Tigna Center with the expansion, uh, we're going to keep bringing it up, even if we have to go before the the commission and uh, right. ask for it because right. we need that track field right. over here in this community. And we know you can only recommend and then go and report your findings to the city manager. And we know there's a process. So we can also talk to uh, uh, Mr. Santucci and uh, our commissioner and the mayor and all of them too. So hopefully they could get it implemented here in the, fu in the future, you know, not this year. We know not this right. year, next year, it could be two, three years down the line. Well, we understand that, but, as long as they're, they're looking into it, hey, that, I guess that's that. That's all the community wants. So, right. Um, yeah, and I'm sure. I, I'm sure that they'll do it. Yeah, and I will say on the adult programming, that's interesting because that's one of the things that came out of that um, that community meeting we had in December, is trying to give the parents something to do while they're there for their kids at basketball or at football or whatever other activity cheerleading. Right. So we did during flag football and we will offer that again, some adult fitness classes in the end zone right. just to give them something to do. And then there is a plan in place and a grant request in place for some adult fitness equipment um, that will probably go over by the new playground mm -hmm. and the pavilion. But the idea would be, um, you know, whether your kids are there for baseball or they're there for football practice, because it happens on that field too, um, you would have something physical you could do besides just sitting there waiting for your kid to be done with practice. Right. Um, so uh, we're looking at putting that adult fitness equipment in a couple of parks. 
Um, but that is uh, that that's a pretty popular thing. And these are these are kind of clumps of fitness equipment that are elliptical, um, you know, uh, push bars based on they have moving parts. Let me say it that way. A lot of aerobic activity, uh, not just what we have right now are just fitness stations, I would call them, but this is a true adult fitness fitness area. So we have a quote. Um, we're just chasing dollars now. Um, we've got a couple of grants that we are that we're trying to get to. There's a huge, huge push across the country for health equity and um, the importance of um, zip codes and areas that have lower life expectancy. Um, so those are some grant opportunities. That's actually how we got the the fitness station over on um, 10th Street, 10th Street. Yeah. the Bosque. Um, but that doesn't have, uh, that's, that's pretty intense equipment. This is something that you or I could do, sit there on the elliptical and talk while we wait for our kids and that sort of thing. So yep. let's, uh, Larry, let's move south a little bit down to Mayo Howard Park. There's is, I mean, it's for a while now, now that there's always been a problem with parking there. Um, it, it, to my knowledge, I think it's only four or five parking spots there, maybe one handicap and like three or four, maybe five parking spots there. And uh, are there any plans to upgrade uh, Mayo Howard Park? Uh, maybe, you know, uh, some playground equipment, maybe a horseshoe pit or um i know that they just sold that property across the street and i uh, i believe if i'm not mistaken that it may be some money that uh, that's uh in yeah. in that for enhancing that park and walkways exactly. and everything could you touch yeah. a little bit on mayo howard park and what are some of the upgrades that you yes. uh, tentatively have planned for mayo howard yes um so uh before we knew that property was going to sell and that we were going to get that, uh, I believe it's $7.5 million commitment to um, public improvements. Um, we had started uh, down the road of making improvements at Mayo Howard. And, you know, we ex extended the parking lot in terms of the fencing, but we didn't add any asphalt that was that was on the on the plan a new shelter, a new restroom, all of that was, was almost under contract. And then we got this opportunity. So, so I would call the condition of Mayo Howard, we are on pause um, with the hopes that, you know, if you get two, $3 million to make park improvements at that park, you're talking about, you're talking about a really nice park. We know parking's an issue. Um, we know that um, the exterior, the fence doesn't look great. Um, but again, that's a spot where, you know, almost every weekend we have a family reunion or, or a birthday party, or it's, it's heavily used by the community. It just isn't all, as functional as it can be. And I have full confidence that um, the community will be involved with, with the development of that plan. And that will be you know, somebody else's dollars, we don't have to rob Peter and pay Paul, we'll just be using somebody's money to make a huge improvement in the community. That was, that was, once I learned that I was, I was pleasantly supportive of the project. So. Okay. And yes, uh, this is my final question. I, I wanted a update on the, I remember here, it was, the names on the Oviedo McKeithen used to have the names Lincoln McVay, Wardell Chance, uh, Miss Edridge Cox, and all, a lot of the names that were out there at some point, they were taken away. I don't know what happened, but can you give us an update on uh, when was those names, or maybe they might have been put back. I haven't been out there. Uh, yep. When will the names be installed back out there? Because we need to, the young people need to know the contributors. Yes that yep. help build where they are uh, playing and exercising yeah. that. Excellent, and I'm glad you asked that question. So um, the Wardell Chance name that was on the scoreboard, that's been redone, repainted, and it, it looks really good. That was just finished in the last couple of weeks. 
Um, Ms. Cox's name has been those letters. We went ahead and replaced them all because we were missing a couple letters. Uh, that's been done. Um, something else you may have noticed over there is we used to have those little walls around the restroom doors, which made some kind of um, a little bit of hiding area, sometimes illegal activity. So we've we've taken those off the building. Now the building needs to be repainted. Uh, the dumpster we've moved to the corner by McDonald's. So as you're walking up to the football stadium, you're not looking right at a dumpster and a grease trap. Um, and then for the two big uh, namings, McFay and um, the Wardell Chance, in terms of the story, um, we're working with the families. Um, we got a pretty long uh, narrative on um, from the Chance family. We're going to have to we're going to have to take out, not take out, but we're going to have to reduce the number of letters. But that'll be a, a bronze plaque on. Uh, a stone with some landscaping in front of it, kind of right where the dumpster came out. And then um, on the McFay, uh, working with them on the design of the sign and and the same thing, the story. I, I know for sure the chance uh, plaque will have a profile. I don't remember if the McFay has a profile on it or not. So um, I would say by the end of the summer, You'll see both of those in place. Yes, and 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 also too, because I had a few people call me. And they didn't want to call. You know, they didn't want to make no waves. Uh, but they were telling me that the, I believe that is the equipment area or the bathroom, like down in the park uh, uh, near where the baseball field is. That they were saying that it was leaked. That the that the park was leaking or the building was leaking where they keep the equipment at or the the restroom and i'm like when the person called me i'm like well why don't y'all go over there to the park and rec director she you know you come to me i yeah. mean you need to go to the people that that handle you know that handle that but they were telling me that the equipment building like when in the park over there in the back yeah i know was yeah. uh leaking and it was like they were saying it was mold in there and it was in very poor condition and they were very concerned about that. Um, I would say uh, I know the equipment room unless it's changed and I haven't been in there in a few months. Last time I was in there, uh, it was very neat. It was very clean and there was there was no signs of leaking or anything. Um, I'll make sure staff checks. Uh, I was not aware of a leak. The restroom design at um, at a lot of our restrooms, and it's not it's not unique to the city. Um, they don't. I don't love the way they drain and the way the airflow is. And it, we had the same situation on the beach. Um, that was part of the issue. We took those walls, those little cubby walls, down as well. If someone would get there and the restroom was locked, they would just they were just dirty in that space and um so the restrooms have some upgrades uh, just in terms of better ventilation better lighting that we're going to do so half that building is storage and then the other half is the restrooms i'll double check but i was not aware of a leak but for sure if anybody sees anything in a park that they either don't know what it is aren't sure what it is or they think it can be a park, please 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 encourage them to call us because um we see a lot of stuff, but we don't see it all. Right. And that's what I told them. I mean, maybe are they aware? And they were like, well, they have to be aware of the kids uh, for the Rattlers uh, use that all the time. So I don't know. So I was just bringing it to your attention. I don't know. Appreciate maybe, it. Yeah. You're not, I, yeah. I have no idea. And my, my final question for you, Terry, is uh, I want to talk a little bit about cemetery space. Uh, we know that over here in District 2 uh, that we don't really have any cemetery space left over here and uh as you know it's always been uh the cemetery that we that that has space it's the memorial. In memorial uh you've heard about the history over there and some people over here are not too fond of burying their loved ones over there are, are there any plans uh to have uh, are, are there any areas in district two that you're looking at to possibly uh uh add more cemetery space here um, I can tell you that has not been on the table and, um, you know, um, 
cemeteries are, um, they're great while they're still selling spaces and having burials, but once that goes, you have the perpetual care. And a lot of times you'll see older cemeteries kind of fall by the wayside. Um, we have looked and we will continue to look, is there any opportunity to expand Pine View? We know we have an area that we could get, you know, a dozen more plots. That doesn't really solve the issue. Um, you know, it, it traditionally has not been popular. Uh, cremation, though, is becoming much more acceptable. So whether that's some sort of mausoleum or columbary or something that would be attractive, but also would give us that space. Um, yeah, we're, we're definitely, you know, we, we're out of spaces there. As we said today, everything that's there has been reserved or purchased already. Right. Um, but yeah, I think that's, I think there's an opportunity for that. We were actually just talking today about, um, you know, the fence that we have at Brand Hilda, this kind of, kind of a crazy idea, but the fence we have at Brand Hilda, we have those columns, right? It's black column bar, and then it has the brick columns. Could you design that in a way that you, that you could have a uh, cremation space in them, you know, so that we could get especially people that have family members that are already buried there, give them at least an option to get space there. Um, but everything's on the table. Anybody has an idea, if somebody knows of a space that that's available, I will tell you um, cities are not getting in the cemetery business um, just because the private business can operate in a way that they can continue to make money. We don't, right. we don't have that. You know, you have to charge so darn much and just we don't have that right and also we, we did notice that uh, you added some uh, new sod uh throughout the cemeteries over there um and it looks nice by the way just want to let you know we did see them yes putting some fresh uh grass out there and uh it looks nice so if you ride by and you see the grass nice and green and they the city that has invested uh, put some funds and some revenue over there in uh, Pine View, and it, it looks nice. Just want to give you uh, the kudos on that as well. Well, thank you. We have one more section to do. So if you could drive by and see, there's one section uh, uh, left to do. It's that middle section uh, between 4th and 5th. Um, we, we know that. It's a, it's in the plan. Uh, we will we'll probably do that after October 1st. We get some new side money. And um a memorial is about half done um, and, and keep working on both of those. But uh, that was one of the challenges the city manager gave me when I got here is, what do you think of the cemeteries? And um, so we've tried to make some improvements, put some new hedges, new grass. Um, so I appreciate, I appreciate that. Well, yes, and uh, Terry, uh, when memorial is full to capacity, which I think I heard maybe in about at one time, about three to five years. What are the city plans, if so, if they have any plans, or are they just going to get out of the uh, cemetery business? Because Memorial will fill up, because that's where everyone is going at. And I just want to know, do the city have any plans moving forward when it yeah, fills up? That's a, yeah, that's a tough question. I mean, we... Um... Uh, like I say, cities don't don't get in the cemetery business anymore because because the market, you know, it's so expensive to maintain that it wouldn't necessarily be affordable. I will tell you, um, and um, there is some talk on the commission about, hey, we need to be aware of this. I think we're probably about probably about seven or eight years from being sold out over at Memorial. Uh, that may be a more appealing site for a mausoleum or somebody that would come in maybe and, and make that capital investment um, and then operate the mausoleum or the crematory, whatever, or I'm sorry, columbary. Um, but yeah, we're, uh, it's going to be hard for the city, you know, you're competing for all those general fund dollars. Um, I, I, I think that is something the city is going to have to address in the next five years. I'm just not sure if I have an idea what direction that's going to go. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We, and like I say, I I knew it was never no easy uh, <laughs> answer for that because I don't, you know. But you know, we just like to thank you for coming yeah. on. Uh, yeah, right. and I one one other thing before we let you go, Terry, just talk a, to touch a little bit about. We know we have Juneteenth coming up next weekend. Uh, I know we talked about it a little bit off camera, but uh, just could you? Uh, just kind of give us the update or uh, rundown of who's going to be at Juneteenth. Uh, any uh, entertainment, uh, uh, what kind activities. of activities that's going to be uh, that weekend? That weekend for it's going to be from two to eight p.m. We understand. Yeah, that's correct. And and thank you. I should uh, I should know to plug plug our stuff. Um, yes. So Juneteenth is going to be on Saturday this year instead of Monday. Um, you know, not everybody gets that Monday off and we think we we can draw more attendance. One thing we added this year is uh, tents that the city is paying for and encouraging um, families that have that have three or four generations in the city to to use that space for free and um, and do a reunion. So we're hoping that will help uh, help attendance. Uh, attendance has been kind of low. The music goes um, uh, throughout the day and it kind of starts, um, gospel. And then, you know, the last act is, um, more R and B hip hop up, upbeat. So it just gets, there's, there's a jazz section, uh, Mickey Platt, who's a local guy that that's very popular. We used him a couple times, um, is going to be one of the main entertainers. And then we have, um, some young kids that are going to do that last section. I say kids, they're kids to me. Uh, that last section that um, I believe we got from one of the other cities that had used them and they were very popular. So, um, and we will have a Ferris wheel. So we haven't done that before, but, you know, um, Juneteenth should be a celebration and also educational. So there will be an educational area. There will be a film area um there's a kid's corner but um we want it to be an educational party if there is such a thing right and i almost forgot my most important question terry um oh we see the viewers asking, the viewers in, the are comments. asking in the comments uh <laughs> yeah. are there any plans uh to bring an amphitheater here to deerfield beach it's been hot not only for me I, i've been really pushing it uh not only for me but this community is begging for an amphitheater. Of course, Boca has one, Pompano has one, Parkland, Margate, Tamarack. You know, you can just go on and on. Um, I think the Pine Grove area will be nice over near Pioneer Park. That area, if they could, it could be anywhere in the city. Just, it doesn't have to be in District 2. It could just anywhere. We could just, uh, the people are wanting to know, are there any talks? Preliminary, preliminary talks. I got a little tongue tied there talks about bringing an amphitheater to Deerfield Beach? Uh, I'll make that answer quick. Yes, there are thoughts and talks. Um, you, uh, the design for uh, Pioneer Grove, that whole Pioneer Grove district is uh, probably going to be starting, I would say, within the next year. I've heard that thrown out a lot. Um, the other thing is the pavilion uh, shelter that we're putting in at Ovita, it, it's actually it's called an amphitheater, but the way the roof is shaped, um, it's lower in the west and higher in the east. Acoustically, you would be able to have maybe a little jazz concert there and, right. and people in the shade. So right. I wouldn't call it a true amphitheater, but it is going to be a multi-purpose covered area. So, Well, that's good. Uh, that's that's It's been a hot question that, that everybody's been wanting to ask, and uh, I, I got that question in there. And um, uh, if you want to get in contact with, with Terry, her, her office uh, number, if you want, uh, want to let everybody know if they have any ideas or suggestions, could you uh, give them your, your contact information uh, so they could uh, call? And they're, they're in the comments they're section in the comments. Ask, asking. And uh, thanks to Rebecca Medina for answering it. She, she, put, your, she put the information in she the did. comments. <laughs> you know what? I was digging for a card. I'm like, Yes. I don't know if I know my personal nine five, line, so, yeah. The number is 954-480-4483. 954-480-4483. If you have any suggestions for Terry, 
if you want if you want your input uh you know if you want to have any questions about the amphitheater she probably can't answer them all but uh please uh you know if you have any input about the tigna center she would love to uh of course hear your input and i'm sure there'll be some uh community uh meetings here in the future that we'll we will be letting you all know about so uh again nine five four four eight oh uh four four eight three that is the number to uh reach the park and recreation department and then uh we want to thank uh parks and recreation director miss terry renard, renard for stopping by this evening i know you had a long day you want to get home and relax and maybe have a good glass of wine and, and just watch the Miami Heat beat up the Denver <laughs> Nuggets tonight. So uh, we're going to get you out of here. And uh, we want to thank Rebecca Medina for Rebecca Medina. bringing everyone to us. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Rebecca. You're so welcome, guys. You're so welcome. We Anytime. We'll thank do it you, again thank soon. You. Absolutely. Thank, thank you very, very much. much. All so, right. Uh, Thank you, Terry. Thank and you, Terry. Thanks for stopping by and have a wonderful evening. And thanks, everybody, for watching out in Facebook land. And we will be back real soon. And, have a and, good evening. And don't be don't be a stranger, Terry. OK, I, I won't. Go heat. All right. Thank you all. All right. Have a good evening, everyone. <laughs>